Hello and welcome back to Everyday Adventures in Cooking with Rick. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today uh, we're going to make some chili and cornbread. So with uh, chili is another one of those recipes everybody makes it different and it's not right or wrong it's just everybody does it different. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to grind my own beef. Rather than buying ground beef at the store I went to the butcher and they were having a sale on chuck steaks. So I bought a chuck steak and I'm going to, with my KitchenAid mixer, I have the attachment to grind the meat. I'm going to grind my own hamburg today. This way, for me at least, I know exactly what's going in, what the quality of the meat is. And, I don't know, I think you get a better, better product that way. So with the ground chuck, this happens to have a great uh, marbling, a good amount of fat in it, which is what you want to get good flavor. So to me, this is... Uh, I think good looking steak that's going to make great ground beef. So obviously I've got my plastic cutting board on here so that we don't contaminate the wooden board. If you watch the cooking shows I know sometimes they get in trouble for that. And the chefs don't do that. So I'm going to cut this up into small cubes that'll fit into my grinder and again I'm using that uh, Cutco knife that I bought from a young man trying to work his way through college As you know Cutco is a company that sells uh, I guess door-to-door -door you would call it and you want a good quality knife for this so now we're gonna cut that up into sizes that'll fit and again obviously if you don't have a meat grinder you just go buy ground beef and again I always recommend uh, ground beef that has a little fat in it like an 80-20 mix or something not too lean that's my preference uh, I just don't think it has the same flavor but obviously whatever you like is what you should use once we get this cut up and I'm going to use a coarse uh, the, the mixture I have comes with two blades or two attachments, a fine grind and a coarse grind. I like the coarse for this, the same that I would use if I was making like a sausage or something. There we go. Now we'll get our mixer going and we'll grind this up. So now I've got uh, my meat all cubed up. This is about two pounds of beef that I'm going to do. I'm going to do a big pot of chili because in my house when I make chili, everyone loves it and it goes pretty quick. I can't make a small batch. I have to make a big batch. So we've got about two pounds of ground chuck or chuck steak here that I'm going to grind up. This is the KitchenAid mixer with the grinder attachment. Uh, I also have a sausage stuffing attachment for this. Uh, then in one episode we'll make some homemade sausage, but this is just the grinder. So we're going to start this up. And all you're doing is you're getting your beef. That's why you have to cut it to fit into the hole there. It comes with a plunger. And it just takes a little time, but now you know exactly what's going into your ground beef. There's no question of how long that beef has been sitting there or anything. And knowing the quality of your food, to me, is important. I think people are becoming more conscious of what they eat and wanting to eat fresher. So really, this is it. We're just going to grind this up. It actually goes very quickly. It's not a lot of work, and again, it just lets you know exactly what's going into your into your food that you're serving to your family. And it's kind of fun. I have to admit, I kind of enjoy this. But uh, we're going to finish grinding this up, and then we'll be back in a minute to finish this up. Okay, so we've got all of our meat ground up. You see how beautiful that is? You know, sometimes when you buy ground beef at the store, you open it up, and then the bottom of the package, the meat's not quite as red as it is at the top. Well, now you know exactly what you're getting. And so we've got two pounds here of ground chuck. Now we're gonna put the mixer away and we're gonna get all of our other ingredients to make this chili. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've got our ground beefs all ready. And here's all the ingredients we need to make our chili. I've got some diced tomatoes. And these are uh, 28 ounce cans, I believe. Yeah, 28 ounce diced tomatoes. I've got spices. The spices I'm using are some black pepper, garlic, chili powder, salt, and cumin. This is, I've ground it myself. I buy cumin seeds and grind it up. I think it just has more flavor. Uh, green pepper, red beans, red kidney beans, and white beans. And a couple of fresh jalapenos. So if you don't like it too spicy, and I don't, I don't think it makes it over spicy, just a little bit. If you don't like the spice, obviously you can leave those out. That's up to you. So what we're going to do first is we're going to chop our onion. And we're going to get that started in the pan is the first thing to get that onion sweated down. And as we said before, all this skins from the onions or from any kind of vegetables you're chopping are going to go into our compost bin. And if you watched our previous episode, we're working with a company here called Blue Earth Compost. And it's a great service for your house. You take anything, I think he said anything that grows can be put in there. So whether it's vegetable skins, it can be chicken bones, it can be if you have compostable, 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 compostable plates, or forks, all that can go right in here. And what they do is they leave you this bin at the house and they have a service. Well, they'll come every week or every two weeks, however often, uh, I forget the regular uh, service. I think it's every two weeks or once a month. You can have them come and they'll pick this up. It goes to a plant, a central plant where they compost it. And uh, depending on how much you uh, compost you can get it back in a potting soil type mix like a uh, and it's I think it's a great service I know it's big with uh, one of their big customers are college campuses where they have a lot of food and a lot of food waste so rather than throwing it into the trash which as you know we're having trouble nowadays with what to do with all this trash we generate it goes back into the earth as compost so I think it's a great service so I use them blue earth compost stay in. So we dice this up. I use a large onion. For this, I actually like using a yellow onion. It's got a little bit of a stronger flavor, but you can use any kind of onion you like. I would probably fail chop because my knife cuts aren't consistent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna turn our uh, pan on to a medium heat. All right, so we've got our uh, pan on medium heat. We're going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to the pan. And now we're going to get those onions going. Stir those up, and we're going to give those just about five minutes or so to, to sweat down and get translucent and start to caramelize just a little bit. So now while the onions are starting to sweat down and cook a little bit, we're going to cut our jalapenos and our green pepper. With the jalapenos, and again, I know there's some people that don't like too much heat, so I'm going to make sure that we get the seeds out because a lot of the heat is in the seeds. In the, in the pepper, so we're gonna take that out, get those seeds out of there. I don't wanna, if you want it hotter, obviously go ahead. I just know that there's people here that don't want it quite so hot. So I'm gonna do two jalapenos in here. And I'm gonna do one regular green bell pepper. And again, I like it in there. If you don't like it in there, that's fine. Nobody's gonna say anything. And this time of year, at least now when we're filming this, is uh, deer season for anybody who hunts and has friends who hunt. And I have made venison chili in the past, which I like. Uh, so that's another, another way you can make the chili. So I like to cut these kind of small so nobody's getting a huge bite of jalapeno, but it's just adding the flavor. 
not everybody can handle the heat. green bell pepper up. Same thing, we're going to just take the center out. Cut these up. Again, I like to cut them kind of small for the chili. I don't want big chunks of pepper in there. Chili's always been a big favorite at our house. And again, we're going to make some uh, cornbread to go with this too. Skillet cornbread, which is going to be really good. It's a perfect combination, chili and cornbread. Right. Now we're going to add this right to the onions. You can see our onions have uh, become a little translucent. We're starting to get a little browning in the pan. So these are ready. We're going to add our jalapenos, our green bell pepper. Give that just a couple minutes to cook. Then we are going to add our meat and our spices and cook that and get that meat brown. So our peppers have cooked now for just a couple minutes. So we're going to add our ground uh, beef, our ground chuck to the to the pan and get that cooked. Again, we want to get this probably five minutes, five ten minutes to get this meat starting to brown. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little now. It's like a medium high heat to get that meat brown. We're also going to add our spices now. For me, um, cumin is uh, adds so much flavor to the chili. That's an important one. But we're going to do about, I would say, about a tablespoon of garlic. Got a lot of flavor in there. I'm going to do a good tablespoon of chili powder. As you can see, that was exactly a tablespoon of chili powder. We're going to do a couple teaspoons of black pepper. And again, this uh, Penzi's uh, black pepper is strong, so you don't need quite as much. In the cumin, I'm going to do another, about a tablespoon or so of cumin. Wow. You could smell this right now. It smells fantastic, if I do say so myself. The one thing I forgot is salt. We're going to add a couple of teaspoons of salt into this. So the meat now has been cooking about 10 minutes. It's nice and brown. Um, it smells fantastic. But now we're going to add our tomatoes. So what I've got here are diced tomatoes. I like to have, uh, I like the little chunky bits of tomato in mine. Again, like I say all the time, you can use any kind of tomato you want. If you want to just use a plain puree, or if you like even more, you can use a peeled tomato. If you like a heavier, uh, chunky tomato. For, for chili, I like diced tomatoes. So we're going to add two cans of the diced tomatoes. Nice, thick, hearty chili. I'm also going to get some water, maybe half a can or so of water to put in there. So we're going to add our half a can of water. This chili is going to cook. I like to let it cook for like at least an hour or so. Guess what I forgot? I forgot the beans. What is chili without beans? So they reminded me that I had the two cans of beans here. So we're going to put these in now. I've got, I said small white beans and red kidney. You can use black beans, you can use the bigger white beans, any kind of bean you like. You, you can also use dried beans and have them soak overnight if you want. I honestly just think it's easier to get the can, pour them in. We're going to rinse these off because 
they're packed in um, a very heavy liquid. I'd be lying if I told you exactly what it is, but we want to rinse these out and get that off. And of course they stick into the in the can. We're going to get those out. And if they're stuck in there, just pour some water in the can. And you got to shake them up a little bit. There we go. Get your beans out. And there's our white beans. Now we're going to do our kidney beans. Kidney beans come out a little easier. And again, these are the kind of beans that I like. You're welcome to put any kind of beans you like in your chili. Or none. I know there are people that don't like beans. Now we're going to put this right into the pot. Stir those in. Now we have chili. All right. Now we're going to let that cook, like I say, for about an hour. All right, now we're going to make our cornbread. This is a, going to be made in a skillet, in a cast iron skillet. And this is no flour. Uh, so if you're someone who has a gluten uh, allergy or intolerance to gluten, you can have this recipe because it's made only with corn flour. So this is actually a stone ground yellow cornmeal that we're going to use. And we're going to do two cups of the cornmeal. Now when you're baking, I guess you're supposed to be a little more precise with your measurements. So I will try. I don't do a lot of baking, but so we got two cups of the corn meal. We're going to add, um, I lost my measuring spoons. We're going to add a teaspoon of baking powder. A teaspoon of baking soda. Add a teaspoon of salt. There's the salt. Okay, that's our that's our dry ingredients. Oh, and uh, no, it's not all of them. And we need some sugar. I'm actually using. I've started using uh, raw sugar, kind of a raw cane sugar. Again, I guess we're all trying to eat healthier so anytime I can try and put something that is less refined and this calls for a quarter cup of sugar a quarter cup of sugar and I guess we uh, we should be more conscious of what we're eating and knowing what we're eating and actually if you look at a box of cornbread mix and look at the list of ingredients compared to what you're actually making it when you make it from scratch you're leaving out all these ingredients that I can't even read the names with benzoates and glycines and all that stuff. So not a lot of work to, uh, to make this. we got two eggs that we're going to put in another bowl because we're going to whisk those up. And this is also going to go into our blue earth compost after because the eggshells can go in there. We're just going to whisk those up. I know this is exciting, so we're going to get a good shot of that. Now to that we're going to add a cup of whole milk. And we're adding a cup of buttermilk. Now i got to be honest with you, I made this a couple weeks ago and I used two cups of buttermilk. And I just thought it was too strong, so this is the first time I'm making it this way. So hopefully it comes out good. And we're going to do a cup of buttermilk. 
get all our wet ingredients together. Mix that up. We're going to add that to our dry ingredients. And, and you don't have to over mix this, just get everything mixed together. going to look wet, but it's going to come out perfect in the pan. So once you get that all mixed together, we're going to get our skillet out of the oven and pour this right in there. So like I said, I mixed up the recipe a little bit, trying something different. I think the milk being thinner than the buttermilk, it made the batter just a little bit wetter. So I'm adding maybe two or three tablespoons of cornmeal in there to just to thicken this up just a little bit. And again, this is, when you're experimenting with cooking, you know, sometimes you have to change things up a little bit. Okay, now what I did is I preheated the oven to 400 degrees and I put in there a 10 inch cast iron skillet. So that's nice and hot now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about a tablespoon of butter to the bottom to that pan and you can add oil you can add coconut oil any kind of oil or, or fat that you want we're, oh look at that sizzle up so we're going to add that because honestly with cornbread we're going to uh a buttery flavor is uh actually going to be good with the cornbread so we're going to get that in there and once that melts we're going to add our mix right to there And you can see it's already starting to cook around the edges a little bit because the pan's so hot. And that should give us a really nice crust on the bottom of the cornbread. We're going to throw that back in the oven. So that's going to cook for about 20 minutes. But after about 15 minutes, I would check on it. You don't want to overcook it and let it get dry. But it should be around 20 minutes that this takes. And we'll check on that in about 15 so the cornbread's actually been in there a little over 20 minutes. For some reason, it took a little longer. And pretty sure it's done now. In the center, it was still kind of liquid. But now, as I'm touching it, it's nice and firm. So I believe our cornbread is done. And look at that. It's nice and browned on the top. And you can see it's pulled away from the pan on the edges. And it should have a nice crust on it. So we're going to plate uh, a bowl of chili now. We're going to get a nice sharp cheddar cheese on top and a little cornbread and we are ready to eat. So let's come over here now and we're going to grab some chili. Oof, that smells good. You can see it's reduced down a little bit. Fantastic. So I like cheddar cheese on top of my chili. I've got some, actually some extra sharp Vermont cheddar here. Uh, actually it's Cabot cheddar. And I'm gonna grate my own here. I did not, I forgot to buy cheddar cheese, but nothing wrong with grating some right here. So we're gonna put some cheddar cheese on the top. Now we're going to cut into that cornbread. Hopefully it came out. It's always a, I guess, a guessing game when we do something like this, change it up on the fly. Look at that. It's cooked perfect in the middle. And you can see the bottom because of the cast iron skillet got nice and brown. So it's got a nice crust on it.
There you go. Chili and cornbread. Easy to make. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for watching. Please comment uh, on our page. Don't forget to like the page, share it with your friends. I'd love to hear from you. What are your favorite recipes? What are your favorite food memories? Uh, don't forget about Blue Earth composting. Great way to compost and recycle all your food waste. And please keep watching the show. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.